Hello, I am Gary Brandner from Rent Arb Studios Comics. This is the show where I try to talk about um, the comics I've read and the Kickstarters I've backed, where you can find those comics and Kickstarters, and hopefully I can do this without flubbing too many times or somebody phone calls me and I have to start over. Anyway, I'm going to start with Kickstarters. Kickstarter comics are one of my favorite things to read and uh, yeah. So you sh I want you to know about the Kickstarters that I'm interested in or backing and where you can find them. So Switchblade Stories number two is on Kickstarter till February 4th. It is a 28 page comic with retro art all entirely written and drawn by Chris Askham and it is the story about a girl with a Switchblade and um, it it looks amazing. I love the art style. I love the uh, the faded beat up distressed paper look and uh, yeah it's very cool looking Switchblade Stories number two on Kickstarter until February 4th and oh, and that's it uh, let's see Fractured Shards is on Kickstarter until February 1st it is a 48 page perfect bound comic book it is not safe for work and it is by Don Ferry Don Fury Eagle Don Fury Eagle that sounds better. He is an actor on a show called Spartacus. I haven't checked that out because it was... I think it's on HBO, and until recently I didn't have HBO. So anyway, he is a Spartacus actor. Um, I heard he's on S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm not sure who he was on S.H.I.E.L.D. I'd have to look him up, see what he looks like, because I did watch all of S.H.I.E.L.D. And uh, yeah, so Don Farigal, Sean Keenan, Stephen Cock, Ricardo... Fassini and Kevin Anthony DiCastro are the art team and writer on that and yeah it is a uh, what do we call that um, a pop kind of future look into it um, like uh, oh man I can't remember the name now it's blanking um, anyway it, it is a future set in a future kind of like the uh, Ghost in the Shell and uh, it looks really cool, Hitman kind of thing going on to it, I think, and a uh, lot of neon colors, that's what caught my eye, and uh, yeah, so check out Fractured Shards, a 48 page comic, uh, it's not safe for work, meaning it is for adults, and it's on Kickstarter till February 1st. Now, Lovecraft P.I. meets Miskatonic High Part 2. Uh, I already have Part 1. I have not read it yet. It is in my read pile, and uh, my read pile is pretty big, so it's going to be a while, but I back to number two because I am confident in Miss Katonic High that they'll put out a good story, and uh, they haven't let me down so far in nine y nine issues, so uh, Miss Katonic High is awesome. It's about a bunch of kids that go to Miss Katonic High School, and you find out that... Uh, each one is dealing with their own paranormal kind of scenario or power and uh, these guys get sucked into a time portal portal back to uh, a private investigators timeline and it looks awesome I can't wait to read get to those Lovecraft PIs and I'm back in this one until January 29th you have so uh, check out Lovecraft PI on Kickstarter until January 29th you will not be sorry that you did and uh, yeah, here's one. It's not on Kickstarter right now, but I thought I'd bring this up because uh, Angelica Reigns is a comic I backed a long time in 2018 is when it ended, and I still have not received it yet, but here's hoping that I finally get it because I did get one recently in the mail, and uh, it's from one that I backed a long time ago and finally got it, so... Now I'm going to move on to, speaking of mail, the mailbox section of my show. Mailbox, mailbox, I got a mailbox and it gets stuck with things and doo 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 doo, -doo. Okay. So I got me a tripod in the mail from Wish. I ordered this in the middle of November and finally got it. So it has different heights I can pick, all that fun stuff. I could screw the uh, camera onto the top. So that'll be a lot better than the thing I'm doing now which is uh, stacking it on top of CDs until I get to the height I want 
so that'll be a lot cooler to do it with. And speaking of wish, I got me some pins in the mail. One that says, I love you a waffle lot. That's that one. And one that says, you are my soy mate. And it is some sushi and a soy. So two waffles and some soy. Those are awesome. I love pins. And uh, yeah, let's see here. The next I got in my list is called Impossible Jones. It comes with a sticker and a print, as you can see. And this is a hardback book. This is the one that uh, I've been waiting for since 2017. I know it was 2017 because I backed this the night my dad died. Um, yeah, so uh, so I finally got it. It is three years later, and um, yeah, Impossible Jones. Can't wait to read this. This is about a criminal that pretends she's a hero for a while while she's a skimming off the top. She grabs a bag from bank robbers and she takes a little bit out of the bag. It sounded awesome and uh, this is from Carl Kessel and let me see I remember that name from the emails and David Hahn and Tony Avina so that's the art team on this one I can't wait to dive into that. It'll go into the read pile and as you know, it'll be a while till I get to that because of the repile. Check out that though. It's got awesome shininess to it. It's huge. It is a little bit bigger than a regular comic book just by a top. So that'll be cool. But I've got the box I've got boxes that can handle that size. So that's Impossible Jones. Finally got it in the mail. Here's another one that it took a while to get. This is Icarus and the Sun. This is from Gabriel Piccolo. He does a lot of uh, Teen Titans kind of art on his Instagram. So that's how long ago I backed this one. Is uh, I no longer have an Instagram for about two or three years. I haven't had one, and so that's how I discovered this is from Instagram. It looks really cool. It is about a guy named Icarus. He's made of wax, and he falls in love with a girl who's made of sun. And as you know, Icarus and the sun. It's a different combination, and so it's really cool. I can't wait to dive into that one. This is a little bit smaller than a comic, as you can see here, but it is also hardbound. I love hardbounds, and uh, I'll have to look into doing that when I get that many pages. All right, oh, one more from the mail. This one here, oh my gosh comes with a sign. It is Crossing number five, I think. Yep, Crossing five of six. And uh, this is the story about a ghost that haunts a uh, engineer, a train driver. And uh, because he was the one that was running the train when it hit her. And uh, you soon find out that there are strange things involved. Other ghosts they go to a kind of an, a, a counseling group where they talk about being haunted and stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm really loving it. The art is amazing. The, the writing's amazing. So I'm so glad I was able to back that one. And uh, okay. And now I'll talk about um, what shows I've been watching lately. I finally did watch the Wonder Woman. Um, and it, it it was pre it was pretty cool. It wasn't quite up to the standards of the uh, first one, but it was awesome. Um, Pedro Pascal he was a he was an awesome guy. You can really relate to him when uh, when he does it all for his son and he's trying to be better to uh, be better than the memory of his father in it. So uh, yeah, I liked Wonder Woman for the heart it had. And it had great visuals, but there was there were some parts that were a little janky and just kind of confusing. Like you really had to stretch uh, reality a little bit to get to that storyline. So, and I've been watching uh, Titans on the uh, HBOs. So it's a pretty cool show. I'm loving 
that uh, mostly what I know of the Titans comes from the Teen Titans show, so that's pretty cool hitting it that way. And uh, yeah, so now I'm going to get into uh, the heart, the meat of this show. Um, I haven't read anything in a while. It's been a rough holiday where I've just been binging shows and stuff on this new HBO thing. So I'm going to get into a uh, a uh, 2020 year in review kind of thing. So, I will start with the top 10 sh things that I've watched, uh, counting movies and TV shows. <sighs> okay, so number 10 on my top 10 of watch list is The Outlander. Um, and more specifically, The Outlander Season 3, because that's what I was able to watch in 2020. And uh, I'm currently, I'm, I'm excited to get for to the next season of Outlander, because, oh my gosh, that is a, it's an awesome show to watch. Um, this season uh, dealt with, uh, well, let's see here. Claire um, touched the stones and went back to her own time. And uh, she marries Frank, and there's Claire in her own time, and uh, so she spends uh, some her life raising a daughter named Brianna, and uh, it's an awesome show. I love it. Um, let's see here. There we go. Dang it. And uh, so yeah, Outlander season three. It's an awesome show. It's one of my favorites. Um, I love how they intertwine. It seems like a history show, but then she brings up things that are happening that happened in the future and stuff like that. So it's got a it's got a tinge of sci-fi to it, even though it's a history show. It's really awesome. I love it. It's one of my favorite shows to watch, and my wife actually watches it with me, even though it has some sci-fi in it. So that is my number ten on my favorite things to watch that I watched this year. Number nine is, uh, well, there are some shows that almost made it to the list. Uh, Birds of Prey, the movie, was a close one. It, it probably would have been 11 if I had done a top 11, but so, anyway, I only did a 10. So this is, number nine on my list is This Is Us. This Is Us is awesome. Uh, I struggled with it. Um, it. It hits me every time. It makes me cry. Uh, it's sad. There's always something sad going on on This Is Us. And this season we are dealing with uh, Kate and Toby have a new baby boy Jack. Um, and stuff like that. Uh, there's the whole cast. So yeah, This Is Us. Like it's it's just an awesome show, and uh, I love Randall. He's uh, he's got a job as a mayor and dealing with that. And his daughter, the one he adopted, is interested in a kid that has a kid of his own, and they're still in high school. So yeah, a lot of lot of touch, a lot of deep subject subjects, and a uh, lot of meat in every episode, and. It's it's pretty cool. I think Greg Berlanti, who uh, who's doing a lot of the DC Universe cart shows, uh, is is one of the uh, front runners, producers of this show. So uh, yeah, my my props to him and uh, all that. There are some couple actors in this that have been in some geek things, as you know, like uh, the actor Randall was in Black Panther. And then the actor for Kevin was in the uh, Smallville as Green Arrow. And then the dad's from Heroes. People all over. Toby is on the Guardians of the Galaxy as Taserface. So, yeah, a lot of cool stuff in uh, This Is Us. Loving that show. I just watched it, the new episode of the new season last night with my wife. And, oh, man, it, yeah, it had me crying. Now, on to number eight of my top ten is Lock and Key. I watched this with my daughters, and uh, they loved it. A lot of sci-fi, a lot of craziness going on with that. It's got 
uh, Aaron Ashmore in it, I think, or Sean Ashmore. I can never keep them straight. Um, and I'm also watching one called The Rookie. It didn't make it to this list either. And it's got one of the Ashmores in it as well. So there are two Ashmores, and they keep popping up in shows that I like. So, um, But yeah, it's about a bunch of kids. They move into their dad's old house, and they're the Locke family. And there are a lot of there are a lot of different keys in this house that do different things. There's keys that open your mind so that you can go into someone's mind and uh, it opens a door. You go into your mind, you sort things out, you can take your fear out of your mind and then you'll never be afraid again. Really crazy show. You ought to check it out. It's on Netflix. Number uh, seven on my list is another one that makes me cry a lot. Uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, the first season. Uh, she finds out she's got this power. She could read me people's minds, but it's not like I know what you're thinking. She hears a song that's based on their what they're going through right then, and she has to decipher based on the song what is going on. And uh, whew, yeah, it hit me hard. Uh, so yeah, um, so in this show, uh, her father has got an illness and uh, he can't even speak any he, he's at they're at the point where he can't speak and uh, he I think it's in the first or second episode he sings true colors to her and it was that song is like whoo and uh, so the whole season deals with uh, really with uh, the father and he his sickness and I just watched the new episode uh, last night of that as well and wow it was, it was really rough because it was on the the anniversary of my mother-in-law's death she died last year and so it was really hard watching the show and dealing with all the things that we have been dealing with uh, we were really close um, she she had a good heart and she always involved the entire family and everything so it was, it's really hard losing someone that is such a good grandma and such a good mom to my wife and <sighs> hmm. sorry this is supposed to be more lighthearted than this um, yeah so I'll go on to uh, number six on my list is uh, a show called Bly Manor Wow, this one made me cry too. Wow, that seems to be a running thing. So Bly, Bly Manor is made by the same people who made The Haunting of Hill House. And uh, it uses a lot of the same actors too. This this guy right here you might recognize from uh, I Zombie, The coroner's off. He works with uh, the main character in that. And uh, yeah, it had a great cast. A lot of good stuff. Um, I'm don't want to tell you too much because the best is not knowing what's going on but uh, they, they do an awesome job in uh, telling a story on the, these Haunting of Hill House and Haunting of Bly Manor and uh, yeah it's definitely one to check out check out Haunting of Bly Manor it's a Netflix show and um, then that brings me to season five or I mean number five on my list and that is the final season of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, uh, the final season of S.H.I.E.L.D. deals a lot with, um, there is a lot of space travel in it, and there are robots, and there are time travel, there is time travel. It was, it was an amazing season of, uh, and, and it was a perfect way to end Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, I'm not sure how many seasons there were. There was a lot of good seasons, though. I enjoyed S.H.I.E.L.D. But yeah, there was space travel. They're running all over space, trying to find Fitz. And uh, time travel, they went to almost every decade, it seems like. So really cool stuff. Um, really loved Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's one you can watch on uh, Hulu or Netflix. So check out Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Great cast, great stuff going on. Number four on my list is The Mandalorian. And, uh, yeah, The Mandalorian is just awesome. I mean, like, uh, sure, the Baby Yoda memes are everywhere and that, but uh, 
it was some good stuff. Um, I love the way it feels like a western, but there's laser guns and androids, all sorts of weird stuff. So Mandalorian, it's a good show. Uh, there's the other, the one of the uh, original Mandalorians was in it. Good stuff. Uh, Rosario Dawson, that was awesome seeing her in it. Katie Sackhoff was in it. Good stuff. Um, and a surprise ending, like I, I. I really can't tell you what's going on with surprise ending, but it blew me away because I I didn't even know what timeline this show was taking place. So uh, that's one of the things that really shocked me because when that person shows up at the end, and I was like, whoa! So this sh takes place then and this and that. No, oh, man. So Mandalorian, check it out. It's on the Disney Plus. You can only watch it on Disney Plus. Number three on my top ten of shows I watched was The Boys. The Boys, oh man. Uh, so, yeah, it's on Amazon. And The Boys are basically superheroes, but none of them are good people. And so there are normal people out there. This is the Homelander. He's the worst of them all. He's a bad person. Not, not good. And, uh, yeah, so The Boys is about a bunch of well, they're not all boys, though, but, you know, they're called the boys, and uh, they're trying to get even with the superheroes because something happened to each of them, and they started out on these vendettas to get rid of superheroes. Good stuff. Number two on my top ten list is The New Mutants. And, man, I have been waiting for a long time for this show. I loved it. Um... It was made before Fox was bought by Disney, and so since it was a pre-acquisition show, it, they took a long time to release it. I don't know why. Probably just to be that way. And, uh, yeah, it's about these five kids that have superpowers. They're mutants from the X-Men universe, and, uh, and they're in an asylum, and they're they're each helping each other out to uh, figure out their powers and stuff like that. Check out these. Every one of these posters was amazing. I really love that one. I might get one of those for my wall. That'd be awesome. There's a different poster, different version. So yeah, these five kids uh, sorting out their powers with each other and uh, in an asylum. So good. Um, very good stuff. Love stories all around that you don't expect. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, who you might know from The Queen's Gambit. That was one that almost made li my list, but uh, didn't quite. There she is again as magic with her magic sword. And Lockheed showed up in it. So that was freaking awesome. Um, maybe there is hope that one day my... Uh, Multiple Man X-Factor Investigation show will get made. Who knows? So number one on my favorite things to watch this year was Harley Quinn, the animated series. Um, not for kids. It was definitely not safe for kids. But it had the voice work of uh, Spongebob. Tom Kenny was in it. And uh, Kaylee Kuoko was Harley Quinn. Lake Bell was... Um, Poison Ivy, and uh, I think George Costanza was even in it as the old man in the wheelchair, and uh, and Alan Tudyk, he was all over that show. Uh, I love Alan Tudyk, you might know him as King Candy, or, oh man, he's been in every Disney CGI movie that they've made, he's even been in Star Wars Universe, he's from Serenity, Firefly, and uh, yeah, and Ron F Funches as uh, King Shark. He was hilarious. So good stuff. Um, yeah. Even had a little bit of Justice League in there. The Batman versus Harley stuff. Amazing. And every time Commissioner Gordon was on there, it cracked me up. And Bane, he always talked like this. I will blow up the city. It, it was cracked me up so much. But yeah, Alan Tudyk was the Joker. He did an amazing job. Check that out. There, was, there were jokes about the Suicide Squad here and there. There were always jokes about Bane blowing up the city. And uh, 
Poison Ivy was getting married to a guy named Kite Man, and the Kite Man jokes are just amazing. A lot of good stuff. So check out Harley Quinn. That's my top 10 of shows that I watched. Now I can put that phone down. Top 10 of shows I watched. Now, let's see here. Now we're going on to the top 10 comic books that I've read. This was a very hard list to make because a top 20 would have been easier, but you know, I wanted to keep it top 10. Things that didn't make the list uh, were Hawkeye Volumes 2 and 3. Pop Kill 1 and 2, that almost made the list, and uh, Shapes 1 through 6, slightly ex exaggerated, almost made the list. Swaza, or um, actually named Snow White, Zombie Apocalypse 2, was close on the list. Starlight almost made the list. Woodland Creatures almost made this list. Le Fay 1 through 3, and Harriet Tubman 3 through 4, and Crossing 4 almost made this list. So without so you know that was a pretty big, pretty good lineup of things that almost made made the list. So now I'm going to start with what did make the list, and number ten on my list is Starside, number three. Starside number three is about a boy. He gets abducted during an alien invasion, and uh, and this whole story is about him going through the galaxy with just his wits, a little high schooler trying to find his sister and uh, it's it's some amazing stuff I love the art style of it Starside number three top ten number ten okay where am I going to put these number nine on my top ten of comics I've read this year in 2020 is uh, Goth Ghost Girl number three two Number two, it has two covers. This is the back cover, and I love this front cover. Check it out. Uh, I love this style. It reminds me of uh, the Fairly Odd Parents and uh, Danny Phantom stuff. It's really cool. Is this is about a girl that she is a the lead guitarist singer in a goth band, a metal band, and uh, and she was killed, and now her ghost haunts the band. She still plays for the band as a ghost. So that's pretty cool stuff. She uh, she communicates. She she haunts her friends. I don't think they're quite on the road yet as a band with a ghost, but I love it. Uh, it's good stuff. I can't wait till the next issues come out. Um, yeah. So that is Goth Ghost Girl. It's my number nine on my list of top ten comics of the 2020. Number eight on my list is Destiny New York, Volume Three and One. I will join. I'll put these together in the same thing because technically they're the same book. It's still an ongoing, but then they both came out, or at least I have read both of them this year. Um, some of my list are not things that came out in 2020, but they're things that came to my attention in 2020. So this was one. It got lost in the mail and. Uh, Pat Shan was awesome. I uh, made sure I got my copy and uh, I loved it. And I always love getting my Pat Shan comics because Destiny New York is awesome. And I have a bunch of other Des uh, Pat Shan comics coming. So I can't wait to get those. But Destiny New York is about a, uh, a girl. And uh, her name's Logan, which is easy to remember because I live just that way is a town called Logan. I go there every week. And uh, so Logan is, uh, sh she had a prophecy. Everybody in this world um, kind of has a prophecy. And then once they live up to it, their life still goes on. And that's what this is about, is what happens to your life after your prophecy has happened. And so she is going through life, going, she's kind of, uh, struggling. She had a girlfriend and it went bad. And we kind of see that life. Uh, and, and also the uh, gangster ass barista is in this too. That was super good stuff. Always a good story. Sometimes tearjerker too. This one deals with some death in the fu her parents and uh, yeah. I, 
I struggle with that stuff. Um, I know they're fictional characters, but sometimes they're written so well that you just it just hits you. And uh, th so that's what made this number eight in my top ten comics that I've read this year. A um, lot of heart in these stories. A lot of good stuff. So, number seven on my top ten comics that I've read this year is Tart, Volume One. Tart, Volume One is it's insane. There, the stuff happens like uh, there's time travel, there's world travel, and uh, it's a team of people that go around and saving. Oh, I can't show you that page. It's not safe for children. But anyway. Uh, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good artwork. It seems like the art style changes with every story change. And uh, it's awesome that way. Uh, I love it. It hit me really good. Um, yeah, Tart has an awesome art style, has an awesome thing going for it. And Kevin Joseph and... Uh, Ludovic Sally are doing an amazing job. I can't wait till the next volume. They're now being published through Scout Comics. So, good for them. It's awesome that they're getting out there to people like me and everybody else. Uh, yeah, you should definitely check out Tart Comics. Ask your comic shop for it, because you will be happy. Um, number six on my list is one I found on Kickstarter. It is, for goodness sake, it is about a... Uh, a man who's cursed to look like a demon and uh, he goes on a road trip with this girl named Rain and she is dead set determined to uh, cure him of his curse and she thinks that the cure is he has to be nice and that'll cure him so maybe that's it and the running gag is uh, every time he tells she asks him uh, what caused the curse? He tells her a different story, kind of like the uh, Joker. How did I get these scars? And yeah, so it's it's kind of funny that way. And um, yeah, it's an awesome story. Check out for goodness' sake. Uh, I have volume two in my read pile. Can't wait to get to that. You'll you'll notice that's a running theme too. Is a lot of these are still in my read pile, and I that's just how it is. Number th uh, five. I'm at number five now. Number five on my read, on my top ten comics of 2020, is Bloodstain, Volume One. Now I'm pretty sure this didn't come out in 2020, but I discovered it in 2020 when uh, on Free Comic Book Day, uh, Linda Sedgwick sent out a link to uh, fans that they could read Bloodstain, and uh, I downloaded it and read it, and I'm like, man, I can't just read this on my phone, I gotta get Bloodstain. So I got Bloodstain 1, 2, and 3 volumes. 2 and 3 are in my read pile, and uh, but Volume 1, it was awesome. It is, it is a story about a girl who can't can't keep the job, a job to save her life, until she, last resort, she goes and gets a job at this crazy place like Dead Man's Lane or something. It's got a weird name. And, uh, Anyway, it, the boss creeps her out, and uh, his name's Vlad Stein, and uh, he's always got red smears all over his lab coat. They make a joke that he's, like, really sloppy with ketchup, I think, so, yeah. And uh, I can't wait to dive into the rest of this, and this is right up there. Um, one of the best features, too, was all the extras in the back. The story about how she came up with the story because of her writer's block, all that fun stuff, and just, and I, I understand how the characters live inside your mind, so you just gotta write the stories, get the art done, and get them out. So that's Bloodstained Volume One. Check that one out. You could, uh, you could find her on Twitter, and uh, you can buy these on Amazon or get them from her shop. Really cool stuff. Number four on my list is All New X-Men, and I read volumes five, six, and seven during this year, and uh, yeah, this is a story, these 
I've always been an X-Men fan, but, you know, after, sorry, after so long, the stories just get so crazy, you don't, re they're not even anywhere near what you used to read when you were a kid, and, uh, but these are kind of going back in, in that feeling for me, um, so the story is Beast, feeling bad, he's like, man, where have we come, what have we come to as X-Men, and, uh, Iceman makes a joke, oh yeah, if Cyclops could see himself now, and then Beast is like, oh yeah, what if he could? So he goes back in time, gets the old team, and brings them back in time to make Cyclops feel guilty, but then they get stuck in our time. And so that's what this is about. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. They even go to uh, Miles Morales' world, so that's really cool. I loved it. And uh, this last issue dealt with a lot of, uh, a lot of Phoenix stuff. A lot of fun stuff. So this is a story I'm really enjoying. Uh, Kitty Pride and Magic are the ones teaching these X-Men how to be X-Men. So that's a cool twist on it too. You could get these anywhere online at your comic shops, you know. And so this is one I'm having my comic shop hold for me. Cool stuff. Number three on my list is Paper Girls. This has been out for a while, but obviously I recently just discovered them so they're going on my list and uh, yeah paper girls two and three they were hard to track down for me but I finally got them and uh, I'm loving this storyline the artwork is crazy awesome I love how they uh, I love how they use color in these stories it's written by Brian K Vaughn who you might know from the last man on earth or under the dome the TV show this should be a TV show. I think it's on its way to becoming a TV show. And it's if you like Stranger Things, you definitely should be checking out this. There's time travel, there's other dimensions, all sorts of fun stuff. Paper Girls 2 and 3 made it to my list on 3. Number 2 on my list is White Ash 3 and 4. White Ash is the story about a small town in, called White Ash, and uh, there's this this boy, he finds out, well, he's not really a boy, he's a college kid, um, but I don't know, I'm old, so that's a boy to me. Anyway, this kid, he finds out that he's an elf, or a dwarf, and uh, and his uh, the girl he's interested in is an elf, and uh, he's trying to solve who killed his father, you find out there's vampires, I'm a sucker for vampire stories, so and the art is amazing. Holy cow! I mean, jeez. Check that stuff out. So yeah, uh, White Ash, three and four, amazing stuff. If you can, these are now being printed again from uh, Scout Comics. So make sure you uh, go to your comic shop and say, hey, I want some White Ash. It's good stuff, awesome stuff. Ooh. Something's on that cover. I better clean that off. So, yeah. White Ash, it's an awesome stuff. Uh, Charlie Stigney is writing that. He's now working at uh, Scout Comics, so it's cool stuff. Um, so, yeah. Check out White Ash 3 and 4. Ask your comic shops for that one. Now, here's another one. This is number one on my list. Miss Katonic High. Uh, they're the ones who... Uh, I was telling you about earlier, I'm back in there, Miskatonic High meets Lovecraft P.I. So check out Miskatonic High, it's the high school students, each one's dealing with their own paranormal problems, and uh, I love it. There's one character, he's a ghost, one character, she is a half rat person from a whole race of rat people in this small town. There's another person who can see ghosts. So yeah, every one of them has to deal with their own paranormal kind of thing. Each issue kind of centers on one per one character and their problem, but you see a little bit of background stuff between all of them. And each issue, I don't think that it's in, no, it's not in the uh, trade, but every issue even has some extras on how they came up with the stories too. So track down Miskatonic High, get it at your comic shop or Etsy or whatever. Find Miss Katonic High and uh, check them out. You can back them on Kickstarter right now for that Lovecraft PI. 
And uh, you can get the whole collection of Miskatonic High and Lovecraft PI stories added to your collection. You won't be sorry. It, I love it. It's got the uh, Archie comics kind of feel to it with the uh, with the neon colors, and uh, I love it. It's one of my favorite. It is my number one top ten comics of 2020. So that's the end of the. Uh, 2020, 2010 comics of, uh, bleh. top 10 2020 comics of my year, and, uh, so now I'm going to start with a year in review of how Retin Art Studios Comics is going. As you know, um, I recently did a Kickstarter, got my pins made, I got a whole bag of pins here, I need to figure out how Etsy works and get these on Etsy so that you guys can buy a Retin Art Studios pin. And uh, I need to put my comics on there too, so you can buy signed covers, uh, not at extra cost or anything. Maybe I don't know. I'll figure out. I have not figured out how Etsy works yet. I went on there to upload my stuff, and it seems like I'm blocked from doing it. So I got to figure out the kinks, what's going on there, why I'm doing that. But this year I've, ooh, I've only sold 77 comics in 2020, so. That's down from last year, the year before anyway, and uh, that brings me to a grand total of 774 Peter Pan the Vampire comic books sold. And that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, and I, so far, and I have made 281.59 negative dollars from selling my comics, but you know it's not bad. It's paid for laptops and printing and uh, pins and stuff like that. So we'll see how it goes the next year. Um, yeah, without a convention, that's probably why my numbers are so low. I usually do a little bit better than that, but not significant numbers. Obviously, if I've only got to 774 comics. Um, so that's my year in review for uh, Rent Art Studios. Personal highlights this year is uh, um, I took the family up to uh, Salmon, Idaho, and uh, visited my father's gravestone. So, yeah, there, there's that. Um, it's a little far away, so I don't know how often I'll be able to visit my father-in-law's gravestone. And then also uh, just a block away is my mother-in-law's, so we're actually down there a little bit more often than going to my dad's gravestone, so it's rough. Uh, yeah, it's not been a good year losing a family member. I've lost my mother-in-law at the very, very, very beginning of this year, the first week of 2020, and um, my grandma died soon after that, and yeah, so it's 2020 has been a rough one. Uh, COVID stuff shut down all all Comic Cons and school. I I had it all set that I was going to be more productive this year, and uh, the pandemic really put a crunch in that. And my job is an essential need. I clean bathrooms at a food warehouse, so food has to keep going out so people could go out and buy it. And that means I have to go to work all the time to clean, extra clean this year uh, so that people can work there and send out food. Um, so yeah, I've been busy nonstop, no breaks. And so the highlights of this year actually um, have getting, been getting my pins made and uh, being with my family, I guess. So hopefully 2021 is going to be better. Um, we'll see. The pandemic's still going. so. I, the only thing that's going to make it a better year, really, is to get rid of the pandemic, and, um, yeah, See, it's been really strange, um, so I'm going to end now. I, I hope you enjoyed my 2020 review, and uh, thank you for watching Red Art Studios Comics. Bye.